give you I, I hope. Hello class. Uh, so today, Joe, Max, and I are going to teach you a little about single linkage cluster and a few other methods of hierarch hierarchical clustering methods. So let's review a little bit of what we already know. Different data sets require different types of clustering depending on what you would like to learn from the data. Uh, we have learned methods ranging from uh, spectral clustering to various types of agglomerative clustering. And depending on what your end game is, you need to choose a different uh, clustering method in order to get the results that you wish for. Our, our first concern when choosing a metric our first concern when choosing a clustering method is to look at the metric space in which we are operating in. Depending on the metric space, it changes what calculations are possible. So if we're in the Euclidean space, we can uh, take the distance between points relatively easily. However, if we are not, then it gets a little bit more difficult. For all of the methods that we're going to teach you about today, well, we will be in the Euclidean, uh, Euclidean space. So just keep that in mind when moving forward. So talking a little bit about uh, agglomerative clustering, which was, as we've covered, the same as hierarchical clustering. We've looked at the very basics of how the algorithm runs in class before, and of course the dendrogram and how that works visually. Uh, just to review a little bit and go a little more in depth, um, on the right obviously is a picture of a very intense and very nicely color-coded dendrogram. And it's important to know moving forward that it's a bottom-up algorithm. It starts with, no matter how big your data set is, every point, every uh, data point that you have is its own cluster. And then, no matter how you're calculating the distance and running the algorithm, you're moving from all different clusters towards one cluster as you move through. Um, on the dendrogram, it's important to know that the distance vertically between the merger represents how long through your distance metric it took for the points to combine. So if they're short vertically, it means they were right next to each other versus a huge gap, meaning it was an outlier very, very far away. Um, and then you can look at the dendrogram and slice it and look at a specific number of clusters um, if you have a bias in your end game of how many clusters you want to have. Um, this is a little bit more about the basics of dendrograms here. And uh, it's important moving forward to know that as we're going to be calculating and moving up, we're going to be running different algorithms called single linkage, complete linkage, average linkage, and centroid linkage. And they all can form dendrograms in this way. Um, and it's important to know that the distance in running the algorithm, there's a distance metric, which we're going to get into later. And that's how the clusters end up merging up the tree. So there is a way to represent these dendrograms with an algorithm and with matrices. Now these replacement algorithms are called Lance Williams algorithms and they're recur it's a recursive process so it'll continue to repeat until there's eventually one single cluster and it's also a greedy algorithm so each iteration uh, performs to the best of its ability. The way it works is that based on your distance metric you create a matrix with all possible distances between clusters. As you can see in the top right matrix the diagonals are zero because the distance between cluster A and itself will be zero. And it's also a symmetric matrix because the distances between clusters A and B are the same as the distance between cluster B and A. The next step is that you find the minimum distance between two clusters. So in the top right matrix, you see that the minimum distance occurs between clusters F and D. You then combine those two clusters to form a new cluster, which is seen in the matrix directly below it. Finally, you recreate your, your matrix with the same dis distance metric that you used before, inputting new values, and repeat the process. Now, the way in which you measure the distance between clusters is the defining factor for each type of clustering. It's important to note that all types start with all points as their own cluster. That kind of means that the first step in the dendrogram or the algorithm will all be the same. For single linkage clustering, the distance between clusters is the minimum distance between any two points in the cluster. You can see this on the chart or picture on the right, that the distance between points one and three is the minimum distance between any 
points between the two clusters. Similarly, complete, complete linkage is the, is the distance between clusters is the maximum distance between any two points in the cluster. As you can see again in the chart, points two and five are the furthest apart when compared to all other points in each cluster. A little more difficult is average linkage method. The distance between clusters in this method is the average of all possible distances between clusters. So when you look at the picture on the right, you're calculating and averaging six distances because you calculate and average the distance, distance between all points between each cluster. Finally is the centroid linkage method. This, in this method, the distance between clusters is the distance between the mean centers of each cluster. So you will find the center of your cluster and then find the center of each cluster and use those distances as your distance metric. Now we'll see a little bit more mathematics behind each method and how they can be applied using our algorithm. So for single linkage algorithm, it, the mathematics are fairly simple. The distance between cluster one and two is the distance is the minimum distance between any point in cluster one and any point in cluster two. Again, there's another picture for you and it's pretty clear to see. What's important to notice is that the chart for the recursive algorithm that we use, the, the matrix that we use, is going to look the same for each method. However, the values that you put in each cell are determined on this distance that we calculate. So, you can see that once you input the distances that you calculate specifically for single linkage, you then go through the method and the process of finding the minimum distance and then combining those clusters. For complete linkage clustering, you can tell that the distance between any two clusters is the maximum distance for any point in cluster one and any point in cluster two. Again, through this picture, you can see that it's a, it's, you know, the distance measures the furthest possible distance. You would then input that value into your matrix and complete all of the possible distances between clusters and then go through your recursive algorithm again. Important to note that the values in our depicted matrices repeat, but that's kind of, it's more of a visual note for us. Next is the average, average linkage clustering mathematics. Now these pictures are also uh, used in a kind of loose manner, but you calculate the distance between every single point in cluster one and every single point in cluster two. And you find the average distance between those points. It's a lot of calculating and uh, visually you can see how it's done. And that's pretty much it for average linkage. Finally is centroid linkage clustering mathematics. And the first step would be to calculate the centroid of, of each cluster and then calculate the respective distances. Uh, clearly depicted in the pictures that are accompany this slide. And again, after each step, you will complete your recursive algorithm, eventually ending up with one final cluster. In the beginning of the, in the, beginning of the lecture, we talked about how it's very important to know what metric space you are in in order to pick the optimal uh, clustering algorithm. So here with centroid linkage, we have an example of why that's important. If we are in Euclidean, in the Euclidean metric space in centroid, while well, using centroid linkage, calculating the mean is fairly trivial. We just add, we use the equation below. If we are not in Euclidean distance, however, it gets very difficult, and we have to use something called Fourchet's theorem, which uses the argmin, which, which uses argmin in order to calculate an approximation of the mean. Another example of agglomerative clustering is a method called Ward's method. Ward's method optimizes an, on an objective function in order to, to decide which points to cluster. Uh, the most common form of Ward's method minimizes the variance within each cluster. So instead of using the Euclidean distance, you minimize on the L2 norm. What this does is it finds the, it finds the clusters that have minimum variance internally as it finds a distance, it, it clusters based on minimizing the distance between each internal point of each cluster.
So to prove single linkage clustering, we can do that. We can prove single linkage clustering conceptually. For each iteration of a single linkage clustering algorithm, the minimum distance between clusters starts to grow. We will call this distance sigma. As it grows, every every point within distance sigma is going to belong to a cluster. As sigma grows, all points will start to begin will begin to belong to the same cluster as it encompasses the entire space. So now that we've looked at how the different algorithms run in different metric spaces and the different ways to compute distance, now it's important to think about what your goal is when clustering and to consider different shortcomings that the different uh, methods have based on how they calculate distance. So um, just conceptually, single linkage obviously uses minimum distance. So if in your data set you hypothetically had a long linear chain, uh, of the same distance in between all of these points, it would create a linear connection all at the same time, which is referred to as the chaining shortcoming. Basically, you would end up with a whole long line of points that look like ants, basically. Um, now, complete linkage, as we looked at, uses the maximum distance. And what can happen here is basically the closeness property of clusters can be violated, and basically all that means is you can have points in a cluster that are closer to points in a completely different cluster, like edge to edge, than points in their own cluster. Th think about if you had two ellipse-shaped clusters that were closer to each other at the edges. And average, which uses obviously average distance uh, to run the algorithm, basically favors not tight circles, not uh, linear ellipses, but just glob, ambiguous clusters that in the algorithm might not tell you so much. Uh, and moving on, uh, so I drew some pictures in some of these slides, excuse my uh, handwriting, but so here is the shortcoming of single linkage on the right. And kind of like I was saying, if you, it, it, it can lead to chaining basically, which is if you have a ton of points linearly or close to that have the same distance in between and you increase like we looked at in the proof that distance sigma to be a certain distance, they would all chain together at that same iteration when running the algorithm. And it would recognize that long chain as a cluster, which you obviously don't want. Uh, in I, I mean, you might want that. It just depends on how you want your clusters to look. And this uh, obviously is a shortcoming of single and might not be helpful. Complete linkage, complete linkage is not without its shortcomings. If the data sets are not in tightly packed clusters, it can result in long oval shaped clusterings. This becomes an issue, such as in this image, as the two furthest distance within each cluster can be further apart than the distance between the actual two clusters. As average linkage uses the average distance between clusters, it can sometimes it sometimes takes the shortcomings of both single linkage and complete linkage. It can result in ambiguous glob-like clusters that don't necessarily tell you enough information. So here we're going to look at Wissart's algorithm, which is an example of robust linkage. And kind of like Ward's method, this is just basically a more, slightly more complicated variation of single linkage. Now the point is is that it adds a parameter t. Uh, along with the increasing radius that we looked at in the proof of single linkage. And the whole point is it considers live points and not live points. And the goal is to prevent what's shown in the picture here of having one big ambiguous cluster that doesn't tell you anything. For instance, if where I, my mouse is moving along here, if the distance between all of these linear points was the same and the connection to each cluster was the same, once the distance hit a certain level sigma, the whole cluster would become one, which wouldn't tell you anything. Uh, so you would immediately hop from the growing two dense clusters to one big, uninteresting one. So the, the whole goal of Wissarts is to try to overcome the uh, shortcoming of single linkage by using the parameter t in order to give you more meaningful results in that manner. So here's a look at a high-level overview of the shortcomings. and here we can visualize them in the dendrograms to the right. Uh, so like we talked about, single linkage is, uh, its shortcoming is chaining or the linear uh, iterations with the same distance sigma. 
So I'm going to highlight it with the mouse here, moving along the chain on the right. Uh, you can kind of see where the linear uh, glob would be in the clustering. Now, if we look at complete, which is maximum distance, that can violate the closeness property. And if you look at the dendrogram uh, for complete in the middle in blue, it obviously looks different. And you can kind of see where I'm circling these, uh, you know, ellipse-shaped cluster parts, sections of the dendrogram that could potentially, depending on how they're oriented, violate the closeness property and be closer to other clusters than their own along the major axis. And now uh, average linkage on the left in green is obviously a mixture of both. And, you know, it, you can see visually that the dendrogram for average is in between what complete and single look like. And it's also, you can see bigger glob ellipses like I'm highlighting here that might not tell you anything in terms of the data because it comes with a little bit of the shortcomings of both single and complete, obviously. Um, so here we're, again, here's just a conceptual high-level overview of what we've covered. Uh, to the right, this highlights, you know, the different methods of how you're going to look at distance. Single using the minimum, complete using the maximum, average using all possible ways of calculating distance of points that aren't in the same cluster. Centroid using the mean, if you have a way to calculate the mean in that metric space. Uh, wards, of course, and then if you look on the right, just very simple diagrams uh, showing the differences visually so you can understand the shortcomings, how each works at a very basic level, and then how each works visually in terms of the data. And here are our sources that we've consulted, some of the class textbooks, and some online resources that we've pulled things from as well. Thank you.